Yo, what is going on guys? It is Midnight bringing you yet again another video on Fairy Tale. Now in today's video I've got a highly requested video which is the Guild Clash Vigio, uh, Vigio? video. So um, what I'm going to be doing is in the background, it will be muted because I was in a Discord call with my guild mates um, and obviously I want to talk over and explain the mode. Um, but I did record our Guild Clash this week. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm um, kind of watching the video and explaining it at the same time. I'm not going to upload the whole video because it is an hour long. But I'm just going to explain most of the Guild Clash and the things that there are in, in the mode. Some little strategies and things like that. So um, first off, uh, the Guild Clash starts one hour before reset uh, each week. And in order to participate, you need to have at least 50 activity in the guild that week. You need to have at least 10 members in the guild and you need to have at least uh, 35 or 45 million power overall as a guild. Um, after the first week, you should be able to have all of these criteria met quite easily, apart from maybe the guild activity. But that's something your guild leader and official should kind of keep up to date on. Once you go inside of this mode, you get what is in a one hour mode and the first half an hour, you'll be able to attack any land without uh, in the inclusion of the guild bases. So these are bases um, strictly for guilds and once they're eliminated, no members from that guild can uh, participate in the event anymore. Um, and then that means that the last half an hour of the, the mode, you can actually attack guild bases. So the first half an hour is like a preparation phase. You can attack guild members, but you can't attack the guild itself last half an hour you can attack the guild now the way this mode works is you get uh, stamina which you should be able to see at the top right hand side of the corner and uh, next to the gems and the revive tokens and in order to take over a land you need to travel to it and you can only travel to land that is directly next to an occupied land of yours so in this case obviously the mode has just started you can see my guild are attacking desert 3 desert 4 and desert 1 we won't be able to move anywhere beyond that until we capture those lands. Once you go to an unoccupied land, you can attack it using your stamina. Um, you get a total of 100 stamina until you go back to spawn, which you will have to revive yourself, basically like um, ending yourself or if you lose a fight against someone. Um, the unoccupied lands, you don't fight anyone. All you do is go there, use your stamina. So just for example, um, Desert 4, um, where Anansi and my other guildmate Clover, they have to use 15 stamina between them to claim that land. Once they've claimed it, they can move on to the next. If, like you can see at the bottom here, you can see my um, guildmate Orphan has got two of the enemy guild uh, members in that land. You cannot attack that land until the enemy guild members are off of that tile. In order to get them off of that tile, which you'll see a bit later on in the video, you need to click on their name, use five of your stamina, and you essentially have a fight against them. You have two teams. Every guild member has two teams, and you fight two on two, basically. Um, your health does not regenerate, so let's say uh, you, you were in this mode. I were to attack you, and you beat my first team, but my second team beat both your teams. My first team will be out of the running until I die and I just have to survive off that second team. If you die, it's not that big of a deal. You just get sent back to your spawn. You have a one minute respawn timer unless you spend physical money to get a revive token and you'll go back to spawn and you'll have to wait one minute before you can move again and you have five lives for free. So you can be beaten a total of five times before you are completely eliminated from the match. Um, so ideally you want to play it safe uh, towards the end of your lives and maybe save your stronger guild members to attack some of the stronger guild members from the other guilds otherwise you know you might have the top player from one of the guilds just go around wiping everyone out um, if he's got the stamina to do so but anyway once you have eliminated the enemy guild members off of that land then you can start occupying it again other guild members can start attacking your land if uh, you know they see fit so let's say for example I mean I'm moving all over the screen here let's say we have obviously desert six as you can see here if finest guild were to send a member there they could start attacking it and because we have no guild members there they would basically just have to use their energy to take it over 
hopefully this is making sense it is quite a complicated mode i'm i'm a learner by experiencing things so like i learn by doing um rather than seeing and writing and things so it might just be a mode that you have to play yourself but anyway i'll carry on so um with each of the lands you get a certain amount of points I believe the small lands, like the ones like Desert 8, 5, uh, 3 and stuff like that give you one point. As you can see, Desert 19 that we've just taken over had 80 health and that's a much bigger land than the rest of them. That land there gave us five points. And there is a land in the middle of the map which I believe gives you 10 points. And that land also has a bonus effect of whoever the guild is that is occupying it has a 50% cooldown reduction. I believe this is for revives, traveling to different lands um, i'm not sure if it means that or if it means 50 percent cooldown reduction on skills in battle if that is the case then getting that middle land is going to be absolutely crucial to win fights um, as i mentioned just a minute ago to get to a land you need to travel to it it takes about two minutes usually i think to travel from one land to another doesn't matter how far away it is you can use five gems to half that time so you could be looking at 15 gems per travel just to make it 15 seconds and get that speed up just so that you can occupy more lands in a quicker time frame. Um, and to be honest with you, I think that is pretty much most of it. I'm not going to lie. Um, obviously, at the end of the hour, whoever has the most points at the end of it, they uh, gain those points. You only get points for lands that you occupy at the very last second of the game. It doesn't matter if you occupy a land middle of the game and then you know you get defeated, you will have no points. So we are, you know, allied in our with well in our server bracket from servers 46 to 50. Um, our guild Legion are combined with the two other top guilds in our bracket, 46 and 47. Um, Extreme and Monarch. Us three guilds have been working together, so we refused to attack each other, and we kind of took out the other guilds on the server. Suggested so that the three of our guilds can ensure the top 12 for the monthly event, which is going to be a bigger cross server guild wars. Um, so you can technically do that. Obviously, you know, if you have communication with other guilds, you can do that to try and share the rewards out. We all share Discord, so we've kind of arranged. You know, one guild will take the guild, um, the big base in the middle. Then next week we will take it, and then the week after, you know, so on and so forth. Um, obviously, many of you might not like this idea, but at the same time, this is, I guess, you know, politics in a way um, in like guild wars. You know, so obviously when you get to the guild monthly event, you know, some guilds might be like, no, I don't want to take third place, so I'm not teaming up with you. You know, we're going to take you out. Things like that. Our guilds are all very friendly with each other. We're all very you know, we, we all like, you know, quite fair with each other. You know, we all know what we want and we're not too fussed about who gets first, second or third. We're all just trying to have fun with the game, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, as you can see, um, we're taking over a lot of the lands right now. What I'm going to do is, because I think I have pretty much explained most of the mode to you guys. I'm not going to lie. Like, it sounds really complicated, the mode, but it's really not. Um, as I said... Once you get past the first 30 minutes of the mode, then you can start attacking guild bases, which is the main thing you want to do. Oh, so right now you're going to see me attacking a guy. So you get to see like roughly what that is. Um, I'm pretty sure he actually beats me. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll just carry on watching it, I guess. But yeah, so you see I fight this guy here. And let me see. If he beats me, you'll see that I get respawned back at the base. But... If he doesn't, then you're going to see that when I get in the next fight after this, you you kind of like look at my character's health. They go in half health against this team. And then you'll see like, well, you won't see it now because I think someone else fights him. But one of my guildmates will now fight this guy and the team that he has left with that much health, they will have to fight with that essentially. So a really, really strong unit I would recommend to bring to Guild Clash is Wendy. Because there was a period of time where I only had Wendy, Ikaruga and Urza's team left. And I was still able to beat many teams back to back to back. Uh, just because Wendy immediately popped a hill from the get-go. Healed Ikaruga back up to full health. And then I went into another fight with full health characters. And so Wendy is very, very good for this mode. She is almost a must, I would say. If not an absolute must pick to bring to this mode. Um, 
obviously in terms of strategy you can kind of do whatever you want you know you could have maybe your stronger players go around trying to wipe out other enemy players you just got to be careful that they don't get focused on and lose all five of their lives you could try and focus for going for the middle tower first as quickly as you can you can try and do what we do which is work as an alliance with other guilds to work together to ensure that we all get you know top three rewards um there's many different things you can do for this. This mode does heavily depart, de rely on sorry, um, having guild members online. We had about five, and then towards the end, we had about six or seven people come online, which is quite good, considering the first day we had this, we only had three of us online. So there you go. You can see that you can click on their name, see how much health they have left. Um, you get rewards based on where your guild finishes, and you also get rewards based on... Um, your individual value so the amount of energy you used in that one hour period of time you know fighting other players using them to capture lands things like that and depending on how many points you get within the four weeks of this event going on at the end of the month you will have a monthly event where you'll be fighting against the top 12 guilds in what i believe is 20 servers so you have to ignore this my phone is dying um, which I believe is in 20 servers. So cause right now we're only fighting servers 46, 7, 48, 49 and 50. But in the top 12 at the minute, it's um, for the monthly, It's I've seen server 42 in there. I've seen the server 59 in there. So I'm pretty sure it's within 20 servers because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm, why is there no guilds from server 1, 2, 3, 10, 12, you know, all of those... It just doesn't make sense. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. What I'm going to do as well, uh, whilst I'm on the topic, you know, this is mostly Guild Clash, to be honest with you. There's not much more I can say about this mode. Um, and obviously you get the rewards there, but you can always see that if you check yourselves in your Guild Clash. So, um, in the future, I'm planning to, obviously tomorrow, I'm planning to do a video on the new Urza banner. Just, well, it's not available yet, but just to review the unit, just see what I think about the unit and then kind of give you guys a bit of an opinion on it. The Urza banner that's coming out tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but on the 25th of April. Um, so you can see here, this is this is the team that I was on about. Like, I went in there with one team and Wendy just practically kept my Ikaruga alive long enough so that I could beat these this team here, um, two against one. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give you um, a review on that Urza. With the Urza banner, it's um, a paid banner, so you get about four to five summons for free from daily logins and missions that you'll get for throughout, throughout the event. And then you can buy 20 summons with gems. The rest of the summons, if you would like to get her, you have to spend with actual money, not gems, like packs and stuff. Um, the, the summons itself, I believe, cost 680 or 688 gems per summon. So if you want to get all 20 summons for Urza, you're going to be looking at 14,000 gems, I think, roughly, around that bit, around that margin, just to be able to do the full 20 summons. Um, you do get her as a four-star if you do pull her, and her pity will carry over to the next banner, which will be Mirror Jane. Not, it won't be the next banner, but like the next festival banner, I guess. Like I'm just going to call as a Mirror Jane a festival banner. They're a bit unique. Um, but the next festival banner will be Mirror Jane, most likely. I doubt they'll bring out Natsu Grey or Minerva next. It makes sense for it to be uh, um, Mirror Jane. And yeah, uh, I also plan on obviously doing that PvP tier list. Our peak clash will end literally one day, 24 hours after this video. So that will probably come out in the next few days, that PvP tier list. So stay tuned for that. And I'm also planning, not soon, but... In the near future, I'm planning on doing a fleet, uh, flea, a free-to-play series where I will be basically doing a playthrough on a server where I won't be spending any money on that game, or on that server, sorry, and it will just be exclusively free-to-play, and just see how far I can get in the content with the units that you get. And I obviously plan on saving my gems majority for things like Mirror Jane, as uh, units like that. And just seeing how far you can get in the game with the free-to-play units like Nazi, Grey, um, you know, Soul, Aria, and things like that. Um, but what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to end the video, or I'm going to stop talking now. But in the background, I might put a few clips of some battles. I'm not sure yet. But if I don't, then take care, guys, and peace out. 
them. Well, I think they're on respawn right now. Clash mode, three, two, one. And here we go. Sorry, buddy. So I wonder if it gets rid of all the strongholds when you take out the base. I think it does. I think it, it does. Them back to neutral. Yeah, it takes them back to neutral. But I'm going to fight Japs now. Yeah, unfortunate poor kid, man. Is my team going to take both of these out? It would be appreciated if I don't. I wonder if Clove Mosey can revive himself. <laughs> What, is he oh, just... Okay, he's just gonna fall single with one unit. Let's go, Clove. We got this. <laughs> Clove's going in with one unit. Well, I'm attacking finest guild base. If anyone else is free to just wipe them out so that we don't have to deal with them anymore. Um, and then we can focus on SPV. Love, do you know what? Just let him do what he wants to do for the time being. Um, unless someone could take him out. I'm taking I can out. go after yeah. I can go after him. Yeah, try and go after Love, because he's trying to take the big base again. I'll be done with my big base before, so. Okay, I got the big base back. I'm going to go after Love now. Yeah, me and Anansi are taking out Finest, so hopefully they will be out of the picture soon. Then we've got to all focus on this SPV guild, man. They're really, like, you know, trying it. Mm -hmm. they got so many people on. They've probably got the most people on. I don't know about Monarch and stuff, but... <coughs> I've got 30 minutes left now, so... Well, I killed the Zen person out of SPV's base. Oh, one of, one of them's pushing our base. He's, like, right next to it. Uh, Deacon. Deacon. He's really weak, though, so he should be easy easy fight. I uh, killed Love. And Nancy, if you want to keep attacking the base, I'll take the enemy out of the, the land. I can go for Desert 1 and get that Deacon person. I can go back. Uh, If you can take Love out first. I already took Love out. Oh, nice. Then, yeah, if you want to go back and wipe him out, or if you want to help just take out the SPV base, because if they're yeah. out, then that's it. We don't have to worry about the members anymore. I'll help with that, but I want to guard this base first while he's already coming over here. Don't see me. I'm low down. I'll probably die with the next person. What? Star. Uh, okay. Throw it. Go for it. Go for it. Me and Anansi have almost taken out Finest. Yeah, no, I think they're just chilling there, to be fair. Are they still attacking it? <laughs> Grim's attacking Abe. <laughs> Oh, there's a kill of death. Uh, go to... Fuck, where was that? Re uh, guild report. Oh, what, on personal? Uh, Zach killed 10. I killed 10. Akane killed 11. Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, it shows how many people we killed in battle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and if you go to rankings, you can go to personal and then see, like, every individual person in the lobby. Yeah, I got shit personal rankings, even though I murdered these people. Yeah. Pissed what off. Is, where's that at? Uh, you hit ranking and then uh, at the top next to guild right ranking. Right next to your lineup, you got ranking and guild report right next to each other. Oh, I got fit. Whoa, 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 what's Athena doing? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's crazy, <laughs> man. Me? Yeah. You can't see the chat because she's in the battle. Like, if you're in the battle, you can't see chats. So, she's going to keep attacking. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure I told her to go attack Meadow 12. That's Meadow 11, I think. I don't even know if there is a Meadow 12. Uh, no, I don't think there is. Well, then I sent her to the right place. Do nothing, sit there.
Well, I mean, Grim lost his his main team. Yeah. Second team is wounded. I just want to run at him. <laughs> Go at him. Just so that be beat him. Go beat him, and then that way you can just yeah. brag about it. <laughs> yeah, maybe I wasn't already wounded, but fuck it. I'm gonna send I'll him go. a message. I'm gonna say at Grim. My guild sure mate wants to hit it. attack you so he can brag that he <laughs> wounded Grim. <laughs> Abe's gone back for a second. <laughs> I think Abe is just going to shoot up take it if he can. No, nah, I don't think they'll have enough time. <laughs> yeah, there's only like 50 seconds left. Damn, A one. Payne just said I'm disappointed, Grim, because he was like, oh yeah, they definitely hurt me good, your guild. Yeah, just don't attack the base. I don't think... Uh, Using uh, stamina to take points off the base, that doesn't give you points, does it? No, 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 it don't. <laughs> it's only when you take the base. As soon as I get here, I'll turn around. Yeah, Abe's still going. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, everything's all good. Oh, everything's, yeah, no. well, everything's all in order. Time. We've got five seconds. And Kadoosh. There we go. Oh. GG guys.